This is Lemmy with Revzilla TV, here to talk to you today about how to bleed your motorcycle brakes. So my guess is if you're watching this video, you need to bleed your motorcycle brakes. You're probably in one of three scenarios. First, you've installed some new braking parts, thus introducing air into your system. Or perhaps secondly, you're just doing a little regularly scheduled maintenance. You're flushing out your brake fluid, or perhaps you're looking a little dark or discolored. And the third possibility too is maybe you just have a poor brake lever or pedal feel and you want to do something to change that. All of these scenarios are great reasons to get after bleeding your brakes. It's a pretty easy process, and fortunately, it's the same on many, many motorcycles. So even though I'm working on a late model Triumph here, you should know that this is going to work on a wide variety of motorcycles. Whether you're on a Harley or a Honda, it's going to be scarily similar how similar what I'm doing is to whatever it is that you're going to be working on. Now, this isn't really that difficult. I'm going to call it a one beard or beard scale of difficulty if you're just bleeding your brakes. It's a very simple process. I'm going to show you how to do it in just a sec. Now, if you're doing an entire fluid exchange, the process is probably still a one bearder. It's not hard, you're just going to be cycling more fluid through. So you're just doing the same thing I'm doing, but you're going to do more of it. And then, of course, if you're actually requiring some heavy cleaning, or perhaps you need to rebuild a master cylinder or a caliper, that requires a little bit more advanced work and some more tools, rather than the single wrench you're going to need to bleed your brakes. Keep in mind, that might kick into the two beard category in our BSD, our beard scale of difficulty. So before we get into the actual wrenching process, let's talk just a little bit about brake fluid. It's sort of an important fluid for your motorcycle. You've probably noticed there's a blanket on this motorcycle. The reason we have this fender blanket on here is to protect the painted surfaces. Brake fluid is unbelievably hard on paint. So keep in mind, you want to do everything you can to protect those painted surfaces. It's a lot easier to throw a soaked rag into the laundry or into the trash can than it is to pull a tank off to repaint it. So make sure you're protecting your painted surfaces. One of the other things to keep in mind, too, is that brake fluid is hygroscopic, meaning it pulls water from the air. Water has a boiling point that's much lower than that of brake fluid. Brakes are subject to extremely high temperatures. So keep in mind, too, if since it's pulling moisture out of the air, you want to use brake fluid from a sealed container. One of the things I'll do is buy lots of little containers, so I always have fresh small containers to open in the shop. It really doesn't make sense to buy a giant gallon jug of brake fluid that you're not going to use, and by the next time you need it, it's probably going to have all sorts of water in it. So always use a sealed container, and buying small can sort of help you out. Brake fluid is not expensive, so it's one of those things where buying in quantity doesn't necessarily help you. Now, speaking of that boiling point of brake fluid, make sure you're using the correct brake fluid for your motorcycle. There are all sorts of different boiling temperatures and also, you know, uh, formulations of brake fluid, too. Some brake fluid is silicone, some is not. Some brake fluid is dot three, dot four, dot five, representing different types of temperatures. Make sure you're using the right stuff for your bike. If you're not certain, check out your master cylinder cap. Almost always, there'll be information molded into the cap that's going to give you an idea of what it is that's supposed to go in your motorcycle. Brakes are an important safety item. You can work on them yourself, certainly, but make sure you're doing it safely because if you don't have brakes, you could have some big, big problems, fairly obviously. So let's get right into things. We're going to talk about how to start bleeding your brakes. Now, I like to start by making sure that there's plenty of fluid in the master cylinder. And this is something really that you should be doing throughout the entire process is keeping an eyeball on the level in the master cylinder because what we're doing is we're using fluid to drive air out of the system. We're using that fluid to push the air out. But in addition to the air coming out, some fluid's going to come out as well. If the level in your master cylinder should fall low enough that your system can actually draw air in, you've completely negated the point of bleeding your system. You've introduced air back in. So by keeping an eyeball on that fluid level the entire time, it'll make sure that you're not going back to do any double work. Now, one of the other things you should probably think about, too, is how these systems are actually getting bled out. Now, fronts and rears usually split, but even within a system, you want to start at the point, the bleeder, that is farthest away from the master cylinder. So if you're working on rear brakes, for most of you, that should be pretty easy. There's just going to be one bleeder at the rear of the bike, and that's that. However, on something like this Twin Disc Triumph, you can see I've got in front of me here, we're going to start actually on the left side caliper. That side's already done. I've moved over to the right side. I'm showing you the right side right now, the second point in the system, because it's a little easier to see everything and what I'm doing, what my hands are doing, and the sequence of steps, because all this stuff's on the same side of the motorcycle. And on some bikes, too, you'll notice like this one actually has a bleeder up at the master itself. That would be obviously the final one to be bled. So let's get cooking along here. I like to take the master cylinder cap off. As I had said, make sure that there's fluid in there. I've already filled this one up, made sure we have plenty of fluid. 
Now, some folks will leave the cap off. I don't like to do that. I like to leave it just resting lightly on there. We're gonna be pumping the brake lever in order to get pressure. And sometimes that pumping can cause little geysers to come up in the reservoir. And rather than have those geysers potentially come out of the reservoir and damage things, by leaving the cap on there, it sort of helps shield, the, uh, shield some of those painted surfaces I was talking about earlier from getting hit with any brake fluid. So we've got our, our new fluid in here. Um, and again, keeping your eye on this the entire time we're doing this, we now need to actually start the bleeding process. I like to use a little clear vinyl tubing. I grab this stuff at the hardware store. It's really, really cheap. It's like 50 cents a foot. Grab some of this stuff. And what I like to do is hook this up to the actual bleeder port on the caliper. Now you'll notice right now I'm removing a rubber cap to get to the bleeder port. That rubber cap's actually kind of important. What it does is seals um, all sorts of muck out from the brake system. It keeps anything like salt or dirt or perhaps brake dust from getting into your bleeder threads. They're pretty delicate there, and if any of that stuff mucks it up, you can have some serious caliper repair or replacement bills going on in order to get it back to correct. So if you don't have a rubber cap on yours, be sure to grab one. It's something you pick up at the auto parts store, but make sure you have it on there because it's going to protect things from getting into the brake system that aren't supposed to be there. So once I remove that cap, I'm going to put that clear vinyl hose just over the end of the bleeder here. And then what I do is I run that stuff into an appropriate draining pan. You can see here I'm using just an oil drain pan. We've got uh, here, you can use just about anything, a Coke bottle, an old milk jug, anything will work. Just make sure you have something to collect the brake fluid so you don't have brake fluid showing up all over in places you don't want it like the garage floor. From here, we're about set to rock and roll on the actual bleeding process. You only need one tool for this. I've got an eight millimeter wrench. It's gonna be different for you depending on what you have, but one wrench should be able to loosen up the bleeder. That's the only tooling you need here. So I'm gonna describe the process to you real quickly and then I'll actually start working my way through it so you can see what it is that I'm doing. What we're gonna do is we're gonna pump the brake lever several times rapidly in order to build some pressure in the system. From there, we're gonna open up the bleeder valve and that's gonna allow air and fluid to come out. And the lever you're gonna notice is gonna bottom. It's actually gonna hit the bar and that's normal and expected. From that point though, it's important to hang on to the lever at the bar. Don't let it you know, retract to its normal resting position or you will draw air into the system. We'll close up the bleeder and at that point, then we can release the lever and repeat the process until we have a good feeling lever. Let's get started on things. So as I said, I'm gonna rapidly grab this lever to build some pressure and I, I have my, my fingers in a position where I'm ready for this to collapse against the bar. From here, I'm gonna open up the bleeder and you're gonna notice as I open this bleeder, you're gonna see air and fluid kind of rush through here. We're looking, as this happens, we're looking to have no air bubbles coming through there. See all those air bubbles in there? That's no good. Now you'll notice when I crack this, my fingers are against the bar with the lever. There's no way for air to be introduced into this system unless I let that lever go. So what I'm gonna do is close up the bleeder and that will allow me to reset the lever. I'm gonna release the lever now that the bleeder is closed and we're set to repeat the process. And you're gonna do this a couple times. It may be necessary to do it several times. And if you're, hap if you're flushing fluid through, you're gonna notice your fluid actually draining way out and then you're gonna fill it up with new fluid. It will take a couple cycles in order to do this to drive out the old fluid, but it's the easiest way to do it because you don't introduce any air into the system that way. So I'm gonna repeat this process one more time. So I'm gonna build up some pressure and then I'm gonna crack the bleeder. And as I crack this bleeder, you're gonna see my hand hit the bars with the lever. I'm gonna tighten this back up and now I can release the lever. You'll notice there's still some air bubbles in here. So we're gonna repeat the process again. Build up that pressure, crack the bleeder. Now I'm starting to get pretty good feel. You'll notice the lever starts feeling firmer as you go. And you'll also notice fewer and fewer air bubbles in the line. That's a good thing. That means you're doing things correctly. Now you may not have complete lever feel depending on which one you're working on. Obviously it's gonna get better as you, as you bleed each port. So as it stands right now, this is feeling pretty decent. I've got pretty good pressure built up here. If you notice on that one, I had a pretty good clear shot of fluid there. I think we're probably about as good as we're gonna get on this section of the system. It's time to move on to that top bleeder. Now after I do that top bleeder, I'm going to do two more things and this is where you should wind up as well. First, top off your master cylinder. Don't fill it all the way to the brim, but make sure you're close to that upper level mark just in case you do wind up having some more air bubbles. There's adequate fluid in there to displace some of the air that will come naturally out of your brake lines. One of the other things you wanna to do too, it kinda of sounds silly, but you don't wanna forget, don't forget to tighten down that master cylinder cap. You don't wanna run down the road with no rag on there, testing out your new brakes and having brake fluid splashing back onto you and your motorcycle. That's a terrible scenario to be in. 
So as you can see, this is a pretty simple process. Rears are no different. Just replace the word pedal everywhere you heard me saying lever, and it's exactly the same. It really is very simple. Most of you should be able to get this done with absolutely very few problems, regardless of what kind of motorcycle you're on. Now, if you need a bit more information about this, click the info button, head on over to my common tread article. Um, I kind of discuss the operation of brake systems, as well as some of the shop tips and tricks I've picked up over the years doing lots and lots of brake bleeds. If you need immediate assistance because you're stuck on the side of the road, Call one of our gear geeks, cs at revzilla.com for an email or get them on the horn, 877-792-9455. I'm Lemmy, I'm out of here.